There are supernatural blessings that come when we do this very thing, which is why the enemy also knows this. The time that you take positioned in prayer literally becomes your posture throughout the day. I'm talking about so focused on him that you're not distracted by all the other things that are coming around you because you're still. We're called by God to pray and to live lifestyles of prayer because God will equip you and fill you for what's to come. The hour to transform your life. That's what I titled it. The hour. The hour that transforms your life. Right? We know this one thing. We know it's not limited to an hour. Prayer is not limited to an hour, right? But the hour that transforms your life, I want you to start thinking about it that way. I want you to start thinking about it that way because I believe that where God is taking us, it's going to require more time in his presence praying, literally praying. Now, I know we pray all day long. And we pray as we go about, and that's good. And we all do do that. But I'm talking about this isolated time of really pressing into the heart of God. When we take this time and we press into the heart of God and we pray, and you know, the Lord did it today even during worship. He poured out in a way that was very prayerful, right? We didn't sing a lot of the uh, songs that we all know, although we came ready with them. But it's not what God was doing today, right? Today, God was doing something a little different. And he wanted to model, and sometimes he'll do this. He wants to, to model unto us this posture of prayer and worship and the stillness of being in him, stillness in him. And then what happens to us as we allow that stillness to just overwhelm us, to literally be poured into us. So you can't do this any other way. The ability to stand before him in prayer, genuine prayer, true prayer, unadulterated prayer, Amen. is truly, truly a gift from the Lord that we are, ought to never neglect. Okay? So prayer results in the transformation that takes place in us. When we pray, there is a result. That happens, right? And that result, it takes place in us. Where as we posture our lives in this practice that Jesus explained, he modeled it, he explained it, right? And when we posture ourselves in this, in this amazing gift of prayer, we're the ones that change, right? So transformation happened at the hour of prayer in Acts chapter 3. You don't have to turn there just yet. We're going to get to some of the scriptures in a moment. But transformation happened. I believe transformation happened even today. This morning, as we were in worship, but it was a prayerful worship, I believe transformation is hap was happening today, right? And then the word that the Lord gave me was, don't let this be the only time that you do this. Like, make sure that you do this at home. Make sure that you spend that time at home where you're before him, right, in just that stillness and you're praying. You're maybe reading a scripture or two, but you're meditating and you're lifting your voice up before him, right? I'm talking about so focused on him that you're not distracted by all the other things that are coming around you because you're still. Transformation happens at that hour of prayer. Peter and John went to pray. We all know the story in Acts chapter 3, but I want you to see it from a different perspective. We always look at it from the perspective of the man that was healed, the lame man that received his, his healing, right? But I want you to see this from the perspective of Peter and John. Because Peter and John, this is Acts chapter 3, if you want to turn there. But Peter and John went to prayer at the hour of prayer, and they saw a man who had his life transformed by their presence. This man's life was completely transformed because Peter and John were men of prayer. Amen. They were actually going to prayer. This was a practice of theirs, right? So they were going to prayer. And so as they were men that practiced the presence of God, prayer, Right? They had something within them that now was being poured out to the individual that was right in front of them. And the need that that man had was fulfilled because these men were men of prayer. Amen. That should be us. Amen. The needs that come about right. every day as you go about 
should be resolved, answered, because you are people of prayer. Because you have what they need. Because the Holy Spirit pours into you the answers or the anointing or that increase or that insight or that wisdom or that revelation so that what is needed is being poured out because you're a person of prayer. You may have not known what they needed. You didn't even know who you were going to encounter. But because you encountered the king, he prepared you. Because we always think about, right? We always think about the lame man and we go, wow, that's awesome. And it is. You know, and Peter, you know, what, you, what you're saying you need, I don't, I, but what I do have, I'm going to give unto you. Get up and walk. Right? And that's a powerful, powerful story. But I want you to think about it as a person of prayer. What do they carry? What is the power that they carry? Amen? Amen. So vessels under a strong anointing of prayer will walk under a strong ability to change circumstances all around them. Just being in his presence to pray. One-on-one, -on -one. sometimes it's silent, and other times it's fiery. But I love the presence of God and just being with him in prayer. I know that he's looking for vessels that say, I want to increase in my prayer life. And I believe we all can. We all can. So in Ephesians 6 and 18, you can turn there, because we are instructed to live a lifestyle of prayer. We are instructed. Amen. Praying always, Ephesians 6 and 18 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. This life is really not just about you and for you. It's about those that God has connected you to. Amen. And we want to be that blessing that you are in the right place at the right time so that God gives you the wisdom and the insight so that when you speak it, everything changes for them. Amen. Happens all the time. Happens all the time to a person that walks a lifestyle of prayer. And I know that you all can give me testimonies if I had asked. I know you can. But I'm believing that God is wanting the increase even in, in us, all of us, more, more. So Jesus modeled it. So I, I do want you to turn now to Luke 9. Luke 9 and uh, 28. Because Jesus modeled prayer when he and his closest disciples went to prayer on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I'm going to read to you from starting in verse 28. We'll go to 32. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, James, Peter, John, and James and went on the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, this is Jesus, this is our example. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered. You guys, there's nothing new under the sun, and God doesn't change. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered. Don't say yes, but that was Jesus. That was Jesus. No, that, of course that was Jesus. But it was also Moses. And we're also called to behold the glory of God. We are literally called to behold his glory. So as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. So there's literally something happening to Jesus while he's praying. When you're praying and you're truly in the spirit, Something is happening to you. Something's happening. That's why I don't want you to see it as a waste of time or when are they going to get onto the worship or when is somebody going to pray something, right? I don't want you to be, oh, I'm looking at my watch because how long are they going to do this? There is something happening in you. There is a transformation that's taking place. Literally a transformation happens when we become people of prayer. When we become people that understand the beauty of pressing in, in that solitude with him, right? Let's keep going. So here we see that Jesus, the, his appearance was altered. His, his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men walked or talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decrees, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. So here we now have an appearing. God wants to appear to you in your times of prayer. He wants to appear to you. He wants to reveal to you the things that need to be revealed. It's a precious, precious gift that we have to literally seek him in prayer. It's a beautiful gift. But Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. So here he is. 
Peter and those with him, heavy with sleep. But when they woke up, <laughs> they saw that glory, didn't they? Yeah. So here we, Jesus is praying. Just like when we go into times of prayer, I want you to go with an expectation. I want you to go with an expectation that God is going to show up. I want you to go with an expectation that says, you know what? I'm doing even just what Jesus modeled, and I'm doing what pleases the Lord. And I know that he will show up in a tangible way. He was transformed talking to God. Wait a minute. We're talking about Jesus right now. He was transformed as he talked to his father. How much more do you think we will be transformed as we talk to our heavenly father? If we just make this such a priority. And the more you do it, the more you want to. Amen. The more that you do. And I and remember, I know that some of you will say, well, I pray all the time, 24-7. We all, I think, could say that. But I'm not talking about that kind of prayer. Today, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about purposed prayer. I'm talking about being, about being uh, set apart in your time of prayer, wherever that may be. It could be in your closet. It doesn't matter. But it's a time where you have set apart, where your attention is focused on him, where you're still in his presence, and you're praying, and you're worshiping, and your word is open, and you know that you know that you're going to receive, literally receive from the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus received. He was transformed by God. He was being transformed. The time that you take positioned in prayer literally becomes your posture throughout the day because God will equip you and fill you for what's to come. It's literally our interaction with him that empowers us throughout the day to walk in that supernatural lifestyle. And then when we go to, we're still in Luke, but if you go to verse or chapter 22, we see that another time when Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, an angel showed up. You guys, these are examples for us. So that we go, wow, you know what, Lord? It's not that we're like, oh, I hope I see an angel. But what, what I want, Lord, is all that you want to pour out. In other words, my understanding, my heart is open to everything you have for me. And I'm not going to walk with little faith. I'm going to walk with great faith. Amen. With an expectation. So Luke 22, 43. This is, I mean, I just love this whole portion of scripture, the prayer in Gethsemane. But 43 says, an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Strengthening him. And let's back up to verse 39. It says, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. As he was accustomed? Is God waiting to meet you there because he knows you're going to be there? Or is he waiting and waiting and waiting and knowing that you haven't showed up for weeks or months? Be a person that knows you're going to show up and God knows you're going to show up and there's an expectation and he's got a gift for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to show up. So he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. And when he came to the place, he said, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. So Jesus, knowing all things, he knows what's going to happen. He's telling the disciples, pray for yourselves. Pray that you're not going to enter into temptation. And as he was withdrawn from them about a, stone, a stone's throw, he knelt down and he prayed, Father, if... It is your will. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. This is Jesus praying, church. Amen. Amen. And then the angel appears, right, and strengthens him from heaven. And being in agony, verse 44, he prayed more earnestly. Come on, church, you can pray. And then there are times where you pray more earnestly, right, where you put more of your heart into it, right? So he prayed more earnestly, and then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, he had, it says, and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said, why do you sleep? Rise. He says, rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. When you go into your prayer closet and you want to pray, and that's your, that's your intent, and you fall asleep, you got to realize, number one, most likely, yeah, you might just be tired, but most likely it's not anything about that. It's a demon that's trying to make you fall asleep. And some of you didn't know that. I think I probably have 50-50. Some of you know, knew. And some don't, but you do know now that the enemy does not want you to pray. And so he's going to put a spirit of stupor over you 
so that you get all groggy and you start falling asleep. And though you want to pray, you cannot. Remember, sleep was coming over the disciples, right? And he says, can't you even pray for yet just an hour? Can't you even pray for an hour? Kept finding his disciples asleep. Well, the enemy wants to put you to sleep. So what do you do? You rebuke him. You get up. You tell him no. You say, I'm going to pray. And if you have to stand up, and if you have to get louder at that moment in time until you become fully awake, so that spirit that's heavy upon you comes off of you, then do it. But you got to realize these are spiritual tactics. We're called by God to pray and to live lifestyles of prayer. There are so many beautiful blessings there are supernatural blessings that come when we do this very thing, which is why the enemy also knows this and why he tries to put the spirit of sleep or stupor over you so that you, the want, you want to pray, you're all prepared. You can't because you fell asleep again. Or it's like half-hearted. Like you know what I'm talking about. Like you're kind of half praying, but you're kind of not really 100% paying attention because your mind is being dulled. The enemy's at work. Don't let him, don't let him pull his tactics. His tactics are being exposed today. So now you'll be able to walk in a different way and pray in a different way. And we know that prayer leads to boldness. Because faith and intimacy bring godly confidence. And this is in Acts 4.13. And it says, now when they saw the boldness on Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. And they marveled. And they realized they had been with Jesus. Let them marvel. Let them marvel. Church, let them marvel and let them realize you have been with Jesus. You consistently remain with Jesus. Let them marvel. Amen? Amen. And so boldness manifests in your life when you've been with Jesus. You want to talk about lack of confidence? The lack of a prayer life. If you think that, oh, I don't have that much, I don't have boldness, I don't have confidence, increase your prayer life. Literally increase your prayer life. You'll see the boldness of the Lord. It's his, it's his living essence that pours into you. It's his divine expression that pours into you when you become a person of prayer. And then what happens is you don't walk the same way. You don't have the same hang-ups. You don't have the same you know, the same old manner that used to basically just, you know, do you in before. It doesn't happen anymore. You recognize it, and you're empowered because you're a person of prayer. Jesus constantly communed with the Father, and not just when he was in times of isolation, and so do we, right? And Peter had to make this transition as a, a bold warrior, a bold warrior who would be able to speak to 3,000 people and then get them saved. But he first needed to be changed by the power of prayer. And we started with that scripture in Acts chapter 3 and in verse 1. He was being transformed, consistently going to that time of prayer, consistently going there. We know in James 5.16, says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means your prayers are doing something means your prayers are going forth and your prayers are literally setting on fire whatever needs to be set on fire and also setting the release and the increase for wherever that needs to be as well. We have to see the power that God has given us in this discipline, you can call it. But I honestly don't like to call it a discipline, although it is. But it's so much more than a discipline in my mind. This is such a gift. You know, yes, at first I think it feels like a discipline, but it becomes more like a gift. And you realize that, that as you have trained yourselves, right, to just to, to do the things that God has told you to do, prayer being one of them, yeah. right, you see the gift that it becomes to you. Yeah. The gift that and how you change and you transform so much and you have something to give to somebody else. James 5, and um, we'll start in, let's start in 15. It says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. By the way, that's talking about the physically sick. Okay, we're not just talking about, oh, okay, there might be like spiritually or emotionally. It includes it. But that word, with that word save the sick, it's talking about restoring physically. So the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. 
Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. How many of you guys remember when I preached on this, on this one verse years ago? The effective fervent prayer. The effective, that word effective means energetic. Energetic. Okay? In Greek, it means, it means energetic. It means energy. It means fiery. It means earnest. Okay? It means a fervency to, to release results. There are different kinds of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. There are different, there's different ways that God falls upon you to pray. And sometimes it's in the stillness of his presence. And sometimes it's with that earnest prayer where you're earnestly praying and literally things, shackles are coming off of people, though you may not see them with your natural eyes, you have to be aware of what's happen happening in the spirit realm so that you remain as that bold warrior soldier knowing what you're called to do. Amen? Amen. And you know your prayers never die. They don't die. When you pray, and you're praying led by the Lord, of course, your prayers don't die. It's not like, oh, well, that was a prayer that I prayed a long time ago. It's not effective anymore. It doesn't work. No, actually, it's still, it's still working. It doesn't die. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I think for some, we just need to find a place to pray effectively. You know, circumstances change. Things change in life, right? So you can't squeeze out prayer. You just need to find a place to pray effectively. And if that, if that place happens to be your car, for the time being, then so be it. Let it be your car. If that place is the restroom, then so be it. Maybe you have little kids and you have no time to escape. They're always around you. I remember those days. Well, then let it be the restroom. That's fine. But just find that place. Find that place. And in different seasons, you'll have different places, right? So if the Holy Spirit articulated that prayer, then the Holy Spirit will make sure that that prayer is being effective and actually being carried out. The same root word, effectual, is also found in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. I want you to look this up. I'll read it to you, but 1 Thessalonians 2.13. 13. It's the same root word, effectual. So this is what it says, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as a word from men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So that word of God that you received is not just working out there. It's working in you if you believe. It's working in you. It's changing you. Amen? Amen. So when we pray you have to know that heaven responds to our prayers when we pray and we meet the biblical criteria. We have to meet the biblical criteria when we pray. So much of the time people pray in frustration. That's not meeting the biblical criteria. When we pray, we got to pray in faith. When we pray in frustration, does God hear me? Of course he does. Is he gracious? Yeah. Does he sometimes even override us even when we're, yes, 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 and yes again. But it, it also, I think, beckons to be said that there comes a point in time in our walks where we actually need to grow up and say, you know what? I'm not going to pray in a place of frustration. If I feel frustrated and I'm going to pray, I'm going to make sure that the first thing that comes out of my mouth is thanksgiving and not frustration. I'm going to make sure that I, I posture myself and my prayer with, Lord, I thank you that you have given me breath. Lord, I thank you that you have given me, Lord God, your spirit, that I can walk with you. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you have given me another day, whatever it is, but I want you to start thanking him. And as you do this, that frustration starts to wane. And when it wanes, then you can start decreeing the truth and start to pray in faith, not in frustration, Amen. not in fear, not in lack or this despondency. Start your time of prayer in thanksgiving. Amen. 
If you start your time of prayer in thanksgiving, you will end up right in the heart of God. You will end up meeting the criteria for prayer where your prayers are now effective and they're being answered. Because you're not praying out of your soul. You're not praying out of your own will. You're not praying out of your own emotions. You literally realize when I go into prayer, it's like I'm stepping into a whole nother realm. I'm stepping into where I've been called to stand the whole time. I'm stepping into a place of faith where that truly moves mountains. It's a whole, it's completely different than being, I'm so frustrated. Lord, I'm fine. And listen, we've all done it. I understand we've all done it, but just can't stay there. We, we got to grow, right? We got to grow. And we get to grow. We get to say, okay, Lord, teach me how to pray. Do we not say that all the time? Even in worship, Lord, teach me how to pray. And some of you, even not in here, but some of you that might have an, a, a religious mindset might even be a little offended when I say, Lord, teach us how to pray. You'll be like, I can't believe she's saying teach us how to pray. We pray all the time. I can't believe she's saying that. Well, let me tell you something. I never, ever, ever want to be a person that thinks that I have arrived and I have everything that I need. I understand everything about the ways of God and that I've, I'm just, I've arrived. You can't tell me something I don't know. Amen. Mm -mm. Not at all. Lord, teach us. Go deeper with us. Take us deeper in your presence, God. Teach us how to worship. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to live right. Teach us how to be people, Lord, yes, of passion for you, but also walking uprightly in the everyday things. Honoring your spouse. Honoring your children and your grandchildren. Taking care of them. They're not a nuisance. They're not this extra thing that you're going, oh my goodness, if I just didn't have that. That is not of God. They are your ministry. We're going to be people of prayer. And we're going to be people that recognize when I spend time in the prayer, in my prayer closet, wherever that is, right? My secret time, secret place. And I pray. And I get filled up for that day. No matter what comes about, I'm so equipped no matter what pulls, and we all have the pulls, no matter what, you know, uh, interruptions, and some, let's be honest, sometimes there are nothing more than just flat out interruptions that come from the devil. I'm not talking about your children, I'm not talking about your family members, but I'm just talking about literal setups that are flat out just interruptions that come from the devil to try to sidetrack you. But you'll recognize them because you're a person of prayer. You'll recognize them. You will recognize them. You will say, oh, that is not of God. I see that for what it is. The posture of prayer that is formed in the morning will continue throughout the day when you saturate yourself in his presence. Amen. It's a posture. It's a heart's posture. It's a physical posture, but it will carry you through. Amen. Is this making sense to you all? Yeah. Who's excited and can't wait to go home and pray? That is exactly what the Lord told me as I was writing this message. He says, what they're going to be is they're going to be excited to go home and pray. You're going you're to stir something up on the inside of them that they're going to want to go pray. They're going to want and that's a good thing. Guys, that's a good thing, right? We want to be stirred up in this way. Thank you, Father. So we're not going to pray out of our of frustration. We're going to pray out of our spirit, Amen. not, of our soul, not of our, out of our soul. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it, and your joy will be full. Your joy will be full. Thank you, Father. So we speak to the mountain in faith when we pray. Just a few more scriptures. Matthew 21, 22. It says, and whatever thing you ask in prayer, believing, and you will receive. Don't let doubt. Doubt will creep in if you let it. And steal the very posture of your heart. You started out right, but doubt crept in. It robbed you. It robbed from you. Don't let it happen. Don't let it. I don't care how negative it seems, how bad, how long you've been waiting for that job. Don't let doubt creep in there. Because if you give it an inch, it will take a yard. It will take over. Right? So, Believing, the word says, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Believing, what do you believe? Are we believing for God's abundance? Yes. Are we believing for his goodness? Yes. Are we believing for God's increase? Yes and yes again. Whatever it is, 
Well, it says, whatever thing you ask in prayer, believing you will receive it. You guys, this is a promise that should have all of us shouting from the rooftops. Glory to God. Thank you. What a promise. If I believe, I'm going to receive it. You better believe it. So, but the thing is, is that the enemy tries to stop your ability to believe. Tries to stop your ability to believe. But he has no power over you. So why are you giving him power? Amen. He has no power over you. He's under your feet. Rise up. He's under your feet. He has no power over you. If you believe his lies, of course he's going to have power over you. But we're not called to believe his lies. We're called to believe the truth. Amen. No matter how long it takes. Amen. Matthew 6.6. 6. But you, when you pray, not if, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door. Come on, people. We just got to shut the door. When we shut that door, we're shutting the door to the enemy. When we shut that door, we're shutting the door to every negative thing that tries to come against you. When you shut the door. And you're saying, this is my private time with the Lord. I'm shutting the world out. And I am literally shutting myself in with the presence of God. He said, when you shut the door. And you got to realize when you shut the door, it is more than just you shutting the door. Symbolically, spiritually, what you're saying, you're serving notice to every demonic spirit that's trying to invade his way. You're shutting the door. I want you to know what you're doing. I want you to know spiritually, prophetically, symbolically, whatever you want to call it, but I want you to know what you're doing. So when you go into your room to pray and you shut the door, Pray to your father who is in the secret place. He's there. He's there and he's waiting for you. He's there and he's waiting for you. He says, and your father who is in the secret place, and, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. It's not why we pray. Oh, I want to be rewarded openly. My goodness, we got some other things to deal with then, huh? We got some other things and some other layers to remove from you. If you're, all you're really wanting is the open reward, <laughs> That's not why we pray. But it is a benefit that he saw fit to instruct us. That when you go in prayer, you close the door. Your father who sees and who knows and waiting in secret and sees and knows everything about you will also, when you pray in his name, will reward you openly. There was an open reward today by our sweet pastor. And she came up and she shared her testimony. Right? And God's rewarding her openly. That's huge. Yes. She was able to come and share this incredible testimony. We are all a part of that because we've been praying for her. God's rewarding her openly. Praise God. And we are so grateful that you came back to testify. To testify of the goodness of the Lord. It blesses everybody. And all the prayers that we prayed today, even for some that are not currently here, but we prayed for them. Right? You were standing in the gap. And we're praying for them. We're going to receive the, the testimonies of what has happened. We're going to hear of the goodness of the Lord. And how about those that came up for their stomach and stomach issues and digestive issues? We're going to hear of the testimonies of the Lord because God is faithful. Some we may have heard already today. I don't know. I know that, the, the, you know, Kelly and Jess Marie will go around and get the testimonies. Some will have already testified. But we also know that you're going to come and you're going to, you're going to return and you're going to testify. And God gets all the glory. And the last scripture is Matthew 7, 11. Matthew 7, 11, it says, if then you, it says, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? If you being evil, knowing, it says, you know, you know how to give good gifts to your children, but you're not God, <laughs> you know? And so... How much more does your heavenly father in heaven want to give good things to those, what does it say? Who ask. To those who ask. You may have asked a thousand times. Ask again. Keep on knocking. You keep on knocking. You keep on praying. You keep on. Your faith is being built every time you're persistent pursuing the will of God. And when you, you'll eventually see the answers to prayer. Some of you see immediately. And some take time. But your faith 
is increasing. Your ability to stand firm as a righteous son or daughter of the king is being literally established within you. You will not be shaken. Amen?